Welcome to the Weekenders. This is the show where we talk about football, and we are so excited to be back uh, after a little bit and do. Uh, we're just gonna get into it. So this is a mock draft episode. Uh, we're recording this on April fourth, four four four. I wait four four three four. That was like uh, four. <laughs> four four four. That was twenty years ago. Uh, four four twenty four. Uh, so yeah, keep that in mind if any major. Events happen in the next few days. Like uh, this is when we're recording this, but happy to be back with Lexi and Bobby. Everyone's well, ready to rock and roll with some with some draft stuff. Very ready. Yep. I'm excited. Yep. I, I just can't wait to get down there. You know, I'm just like I'm so ready to be down there every day, bright and early to get my spot. <laughs> yeah, NFL yeah, drafts in Detroit. Lexi's yes. back. What like venue of like in Detroit is it? Is it just like at Ford Field or somewhere else? No, so it's like the Hart Plaza. So um, you'll we'll be able to like go all the way up and down Woodward, um, which you know gives a lot of space. Because I think if it would be like next to Comerica or Ford Field, that's just too congested there. Where you got like Hart Plaza kind of like at the end. So it's like you make your way down there. But um, I, we get to sign up for season ticket holders where I can like try to get in on the pit on Saturday. So I'm like. Hope to God I can get it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. It's such a cool experience. Well, really it's so cool. great for the city. You know, I mean, yeah. it just every time, every city they go to of these, it just helps out so many places. So, yeah, yeah. love it. Yeah, it's it's cool that they get to move it around. I've I haven't been to the yeah. NFL draft, but I have been to the NBA one, and it's it's always a fun experience. Yeah, um, yeah, such an exciting time of year. Um, you know, especially for our show because like. I mean, we we blend like college and NFL so much, so this is pretty much like like where college and, and pro football meet. So always fun, uh, you know, the draft time, uh, you know, just with the conversations and the debates. This is sort of getting to the time where like, you know, it's sort of get like an echo chamber and like too much talk about like too many people, and we're just ready for people to just like get on their teams and and move on, but. Um, always, always exciting time before we hit like the lull of football. You know, we were waiting until training camp, pretty much, and preseason. So, all right, here we go. Um, NFL draft. This is our mock draft. We're only doing one, uh, so enjoy it. Um, here's rules for the viewers out there. Uh, we're only gonna each person. Obviously, we're gonna go like round robin, like take turns picking uh, all the way through the first round. Now, each of us are pretend GMs for, uh, you know, the teams that we're assigned to. I just kind of did it randomly. Um, we're, we are the GMs of the team, and, we're, and, you, and we are picking according to what we would do as the GM. So this is not based on, like, research or, like, based on, like, oh, you know, what, what do we think, like, you know, the GM of the Eagles is going to do. Like, obviously, you're going to – put some thought into it like we're not just gonna like pick willy-nilly but like this is just kind of based on our opinion of what the team should do um as as the team's gm um now uh we are only allowed to initiate one trade so we're keeping this simple moving this along so each of us can initiate one trade and of course like you know the person receiving the trade can receive as many trades as they get so you know, whatever, but each only one initiation per person and a new rule this year for our mock draft. Uh, I don't think we did it last year, but this year you are allowed to trade with yourself. So if Lexi, who has the commanders at two, wants to trade with herself as the Vikings at 11 or the Lions at 29 or whatever, she can do that. And, you know, she can just tell us like what the what the uh, conditions are if she accepts them and we'll move on from there to keep it simple. So that's the rules. Let's started. Let's get started. The Chicago bears are on the clock and GM Bobby has the pick. So I, I don't know how we decided the order um, <laughs> because it feels mighty poetic that the OU fan 
is the one who's going to have to pick Caleb Williams. Uh, <laughs> I, I know, I know you're seeing if I would do something else. I there, that, there's no way, and I appreciate the the, the uh, addition to the drama here. But um, yeah, no, <laughs> look, I know there's a lot of questions about Williams's um, attitude, some other stuff, you know, that he's done have been a little bit unconventional for really any high level NFL prospect. But at the end of the day, Caleb Williams is a next level talent. He is a guy you do not pass up on. Um, and you just kind of have to hope that any weirdness about him not wanting to play in Chicago or stuff going on with Carl Williams, any of that, you know, you, you just hope that subsides once you get him in your building, um, for Chicago, obviously you need a quarterback with Justin Fields out. That's not a question anymore. Caleb Williams is your franchise guy. He's the move. Easy, easy. Number one pick. Love it. Caleb Williams to the Bears. Um, yeah, I think, you know, it's one of those, like, foregone conclusions. You know, people have nitpicked certain things. Um, didn't have, like, a year at, at USC last year where you were like, okay, yeah, he's going to, like, ascend to another level and, like, be this great guy. Like, they just didn't have the success like, that you would think, you know, I think – Last year was just also a surprisingly good year for the Pac-12. So, you know, that's a factor in, you know, in the rest of it, you know. But, you know, Caleb Williams is a great, great prospect, obviously. And um, the funny thing, you, Bobby, you mentioned, like, all the, the stuff, like the weirdness with Caleb. But, like, I don't – we're, we're probably going to talk about this later. But, like, I don't think he's been nearly as bad or as weird as Marvin Harrison Jr., that kid is just like, hey, <laughs> I'm not gonna prove <laughs> you guys anymore. Like, pass on me if you want to. <laughs> like, that that dude is like, does not give a flying flip about <laughs> about the draft process. So, Caleb is not has not been that bad. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's we we like to pick there. Uh, all right, number two team on the clock, Washington Commanders, Lexi. What you doing with them? Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, Washington is definitely going to take a QB here. Now, you know, me being home or whatever, um, you know, I, I think JJ is going to go high, but I'm taking Drake May with a second pick. Um, I think that he fits that organization well. I think he'll do well in what, what he would be given there. Um, you know, had a great senior season or junior senior season. But, um, yeah, so I, I got Washington taking Drake May with the number two pick. Yeah, it was the junior season. Uh, one thing that's kind of been mentioned that I didn't think about, I actually thought about this the opposite way with Drake. Uh, I think there's been – these aren't like official reports, but there has been like some people in the media saying that like they, the commanders, got traded Sam Howell because they didn't want the awkwardness of like having Drake May in the room with his former college teammate, which like I get – but when the trade happened, I thought I thought about it like a different way. Or before the trade happened, I thought about it a different way. I was like, oh, yeah, like it would be cool if they were able to – he was able to learn from Sam or whatever and, you know, whatever. But when they traded him, I was like, well, at least they're giving him a chance to be a starter elsewhere, and that's cool. Yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting like little like, in, like insider wrinkle that I didn't really think about. Um, yeah, that probably makes it even more like apparent that they're going to take him. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right well this is interesting because uh number three we're gonna we have the patriots and that's my pick obviously um i uh this is a tough one for me because um the patriots are a team that that need um a lot of things and a quarterback is one of them <laughs> but they also need playmakers they also need um, they also need, you know, offensive lineup and everything like that. Now, there are some trade possibilities that a lot of people have thrown out there. The Patriots could trade with, you know, a Giants or, you know, some team down like the, the Jets, uh, not the Jets, excuse me, the Vikings, Broncos, Raiders. Um, my issue is three is uh, in this scenario with Caleb Williams and Drake May, there's been so much like hype and value placed on Jaden Jaden Daniels 
that I think in this spot, it would be hard for the Patriots to pass on him um, because – and also for the teams that could possibly trade up, they're going to be asking for a really big price tag um, to go up there. Uh, so this makes this a little bit difficult. Now, not saying that it can't happen, but I gave it some thought, and I think the Patriots in this scenario, like while they definitely – could trade back. I just couldn't think of like something that would really like make sense because like I said, the Patriots need a lot of things, but they do need a quarterback and Jaden Daniels, I think has been hyped so much. I feel like the Patriots in this scenario could feel like, okay, we, if we grab, grab Jaden Daniels here, that's, that might be a steal. So it's hard to pass on a, a steal. Um, you know, whether the steal is real or perceived. <laughs> so um, in, in that scenario, like, I, I think the trade's going to be tough here for the Pats, Pats, for the Pats, excuse me. And I think they just take their quarterback and figure out the rest later. Um, so I'm going to have them draft Jaden Daniels. I'm going to let you. Yeah, I think that's a fun pick. You know, it's he's... You know, Daniels, I, I feel like he's had a couple – he has he, ha, he didn't have a great pro day, but, you know, I, I think he could definitely show out and be the quarterback of the future here. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, go ahead, Bobby. You're right there with the Cardinals. Yeah, next up, uh, I know you just, we were just talking about how weird this guy's been, but, you know, maybe he got <laughs> what he wanted. Uh, because at one point we were talking about this guy going to Chicago. Um, clearly must not love uh, cold weather cities because he is falling to me at four – had in Arizona, Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, I don't really, I, I get the weirdness, but my thing to me is wide receivers kind of always are a little like that. You know, they can be a little bit uh, dramatic here and there. And pairing him up with Kyler Murray is just too exciting to pass up. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, on behalf of the Arizona Cardinals, we're uh, pairing uh, Kyler and Marvin Harrison Jr. together, which should be a pretty fun dynamic duo if Kyler Murray can get back uh, to playing at a high level. Yeah, he yeah. definitely is a playmaker like him, so it'll, that's a good fit. Yeah, I agree. And it's, I think it's interesting, like, this is, if, if this were to happen, Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Cardinals, like, that's a big kind of, like, pressure cooker for Kyler Murray because – since he's been at Arizona, like he's had some really good receivers come through there. DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Hollywood Brown. Um, uh, he had AJ green for a little bit. So now to you know, go from all those guys and now you have Marvin Harrison as well. Like, I think there's going to be um, some pressure on the Cardinals and, and Kyle Murray to produce, but you know, you know, Kyle Murray's still young. Only a couple of years, only been in the league for about four or five years, and Marvin Harrison's obviously going to be going to bring that rookie youth and energy. So, um, definitely could be a a, a good combination um, between the two in Arizona. All right, number five pick, Lexi's got uh, the Chargers front office and Jim Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh brain for for, for the number five pick. I think this is. I think to me, this is where like. The draft starts. If the Patriots don't trade their pick at three, this is really where, like, things get get interesting with the Chargers at five. Yeah. So a lot of things shaking up um, for the Chargers this year. You know, getting ready Keenan Allen. It's like there's no um, pick, I think, that will also be more Jim Harbaugh than taking Brock Bowers from Georgia. So um, I think that he would be great for Justin Herbert to get the ball to. Um, you know, really, really tough player, you know, tough minded, which I feel like is very Harbaugh-esque. Um, I think that he'll be a good fit for them. So. All right. Um, you want, you, 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 feel free guys to type it in too. Um, if it's easier for you guys to keep track. Um, okay. But yeah, no, I think um, it's going to be interesting to, like I said before, like, the Chargers are also a team that can do it, go a lot different ways. Um, Brock Bowers is a, obviously a great weapon. I think some, there's some people that I've seen say that he's the best uh, or, like, one of the best players in the draft, like, regardless of position. Like, there's, like, a mm-hmm. the Mark Harris and Brock Bowers, like, 
can't miss conversation a lot up there with Caleb Williams. So, um, yeah, they need a tight end. Great weapon for Justin Herbert. Um, I think they, they need some excitement in their organization as well. So, uh, I like I like the pick. But I think this is going to be interesting, though. Like, while Brock Bowers is great, uh, I think, like, Kyle Pitts might scare folks away from uh, taking a rock high. But I don't think it's fair because Kyle Pitts has been drafted into a terrible quarterback situation. Yeah. <laughs> and Arthur think- Smith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, period. <laughs> like, I, I don't think it's Kyle Pitts' fault that he's not, hasn't been productive. I think the quarterback situation has been really, really bad. But hopefully – Kirk Cousins will, you know, give him the break, breakout career he needs. Um, all right. Uh, all right. That, that leaves, brings us to number six with the Giants. So the Giants definitely are a trade-up candidate. But in this scenario, obviously, you got three quarterbacks off the board. Marvin Harrison Jr. is gone. Brock Bowers is gone. That takes away a couple weapons uh, for the Giants. Um, now, there's been talk about them possibly taking a J.J. McCarthy or, you know, a quarterback to maybe compete with Daniel Jones or, or what have you. Um, and this would definitely be the spot to do it. Um, I think there's a lot of like, likelihood they may go that route. But for me, I think you just paid Daniel Jones a lot of money. You want to get value from this pick. You, this is a, a great, you know, high draft pick. Um, so I think they're going to take a guy that would be an immediate impact player for them and has gotten a lot of hype uh, in this draft as well, almost like Jaden Daniels-esque, which is ironic because they play for the same team. I think that as the Giants see him here, I'm going for Malik Neighbors out of LSU. Um, I think in, in this scenario, you can't pass up the receiving talent. You, give, you might not love Daniel Jones, but you're going to give him a weapon to help him out. Again, you just paid him. Uh, so that's going to bring a lot of excitement to the organization. And, you know, you could have your o- o- uh, Odell Beckham Jr. 2.0, you know, re- good receiver come out of LSU to light things up on the field. So I'm going with Malik Neighbors. I w- <clears throat> Pardon me. I really like that because I feel like this is a, just a remarkable draft for um, wide receivers. That's why with the seventh pick, the Tennessee Titans are going to be <laughs> taking Rome and Dunes, uh, Adunze out of Washington, uh, who I thought was just remarkable last season. Um, obviously, Michael Penix got a lot of the headlines uh, for his incredible you know, quarterbacking ability. But Rome, Rome Adunze was like one of the biggest reasons why Washington went as far as they did. So I, I feel like he adds to, adds to that room. I think he... Um, you know, just really provides them a lot more weapons in that end, uh, in the wide receiver core. And yeah, so we're going Rome there. I like it. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, I think, um, like, you know, similar situation um, for some of these teams. It's like, all right, you got your young quarterback. Now let's put some talent around him. Good weapon for uh, Will Levis, who. Showed some like really good flashes last year. I think the Titans feel, feel comfortable, you know, with Will, but they just want to put some put some things around him as they kind of like turn the page and try to like, you know, get back to being a playoff team. So the, that I like to love us from doing the possibilities. And the next team is Atlanta on the clock with Lexi. Okay. Um, all right. I'm gonna take. You know, I think that the defense for Atlanta, especially like Edge, um, really needs to be like beefed up a little bit. I love that. I can't pronounce this, but like Lay to Letu, um, probably butchered that. But no, he's he's very athletic. You know, he's a big guy. I think he could do well for the um, Falcons organization. So um, really need to get a better defense there and, and get some pressure on quarterback. So. I think that taking someone strong like that, that can, you know, be a starter for them right away uh, will be perfect. Did I pronounce it right too? Does anyone, can anyone confirm Uh, that? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not sure. I think it's a great pick though. Like Mm -hmm. I think it's phenomenal. I think for the Falcons too, like if they could get, if they could 
at that at that spot, if they could come away with possibly the best defensive player in the draft, like that would be phenomenal for them. They haven't had a good defense in a long time since like the Matt Ryan days. Um, like it, would, I think that'd be great to, for them to like have a anchor at, at edge there. Um, mm-hmm. So I like that a lot. Um. All right, we got the Bears on the clock um, with me at the helm. Caleb Williams got your franchise quarterback. Uh, hip, hip, hooray. Uh, <laughs> the the tough part about this situation, and I think, like, the Bears could also be a trade-up candidate, even at their nine spot. Uh, you know, in this scenario, we've got like, a lot of receivers – not even receivers, excuse me, pass catchers off the board – the top three Harrison neighbors and Adunze are gone and Brock Bowers as well. So um, you're not going to be able to, you know, grab another weapon, which is not the worst thing in the world because, you know, you do have DJ Moore and Cannon Allen who they traded for uh, there in Chicago. So uh, this pick for me is pretty simple. Um, I think the, I think they take uh, Joe Walt, Notre Dame, best offensive tackle on the board, get some protection for your franchise quarterback and, and uh, you got a Notre Dame guy, like, could, could not be a better scenario. Notre Dame uh, offensive tackle goes to, goes to the Chicago Bears. The fans will absolutely love him. He's gonna he's gonna ball out for them if that's the pick. Yeah, I was, I was hoping Jill Walt would uh, sneak down to me at uh, you know just a little bit lower because I I kind of whiffed on on I, I feel like he would have been a good fit with the Titans as well, and I feel like I might have whiffed on that. That's the thing that's nice about this mock draft is you can make up for your earlier sins with a different team. Uh, anyways, anyways, at 10 with the, the New York Jets, we're going to go with uh, Talise Fuaga, uh, uh, Fuaga uh, out of Oregon State. Um, he's uh, offensive tackle. And look, as we know with Aaron Rodgers, getting old. Uh, look, last time. He got injured, what, first drive, I, just kind of on his own. So when you have live human beings coming at him, you need someone to stop him. Uh, so I, I think uh, Talise, uh, you know, really provides a little bit more strength, a little bit more long-term, like, um, ability for whoever comes next after the Rodgers because he's not going to do it forever. Um, so I, I think that's the more that's the prudent uh, pick here for the Jets. All right, we get we say Fugawa, 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 Oregon State uh, protecting uh, Aaron Rodgers. Like that a lot for the Jets. Um, I I think that's the pick the Jets should take no matter what. But I think if the draft plays out like it did for us, and all the like big name pass catchers are gone, the Jets will probably take the offensive tackle. Um, I think if there are some, like, if there's a crazy situation where, like, Bowers or Adunze are on the board, I think the Jets might get a little trigger happy and take the receivers because they want to, you know, add some flash or whatever. But I think in any case, offensive tackle should be their priority. And I think this is going to be a, um, I think that'd be a really good pick for them if they got, if they got it. Yeah, and um, that's the thing with the Jets is you always have to – and really any New York team, many big market – well, New York really because the, the LA ones aren't as intense. The desire to kind of eat your vegetables and you know <laughs> do the right thing and take an offensive tackle even though all of your fans will boo you for it because it's not a flashy name versus trying to appease the tabloids and all of the sports media people who will get mad about you know going with a – boring route so um we'll see what the jets do but I, I feel like they might be a pretty solid trade-up candidate just given where they're at given what they're trying to do yeah yeah i couldn't agree more um all right we are at lexi <laughs> uh you want to talk about do. Be- i think i know what you're gonna yeah. do <laughs> You're making you talk about Kayla having to draft Caleb Williams, and you put me in the position that I have to have someone that I hate, a team that I hate, draft my quarterback JJ McCarthy. Um, now I know it's like if I can remove my bias and hatred, sure, I think he could be a great fit as long as you know that they don't give up and trade up and give up Justin Jefferson. You know, you got to have. Um, God, I just don't even want that. I don't even want to manifest this, but 
Yeah, so uh, I, I'm going to have Vikings take JJ. Great leader. Um, someone that I think is going to be a, a good learner under anybody that can teach him. So, um, yeah, JJ McCarthy from Michigan. The, the crazy thing is, is that the, there might not be a more perfect spot for him. Like, you have Don't a say that. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, like I, I don't ever want to root for him to fail, but like, come on. Offensive coach like Justin Jefferson, a, a organization that like you know normally is you know not not they they don't go too many years without making the playoffs. Like they normally they normally find their footing, um, and yeah, I mean a, a place where. Um, he would definitely get opportunity to uh, grow with all the resources they have there. Sam Darnold's there as well, so he doesn't even have to start right away. Like, that's a really great situation. And for them to grab him and not even have to trade up, like, that would be a, a crazy scenario for the Vikings if that were to happen. Yeah. But um, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that that makes this a difficult choice for me here at at twelve, um, and you know we're we're at the Broncos who, you know, again trade up candidate. Uh, they need a quarterback as well. Um, you know, and the fun the funny thing is like they they or the Raiders, you know, would have been interesting candidates to jump ahead of. Um, you know, the Vikings still grab, grab McCarthy. But I think Sean Payton, um, like, he knows he has some time there. He knows last year was a little bit of a um, – a little bit of a not, – not a mulligan, but kind of like a, you know, whatever year because Russell Wilson, you know, he's, he's going to, you know, put all the blame on that. Um, so, to me, like, I don't think – they would necessarily reach in this scenario. Like, I think Michael Penix would be a phenomenal pick here. But I'm just not getting a sense that, like, teams are – I'm not getting a sense that, like, a Broncos would, like, necessarily need to, like, reach to grab him at, at this spot. Um, I, don't think, I, don't, I don't get that desperation from them, so – just my opinion on, on the Broncos and like what I would do in the situation. Um, I think they would get some great to great get great value in drafting a guy like Troy uh, Fatanu, who was at Washington tackle. You get some protection there for you know your future quarterback that they might be able to grab later on in the draft. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm going to go with that. I think they're they're going to take a tackle or. Just another guy, maybe maybe a corner or other defensive player. I just don't see them necessarily reaching for like a Bo Nix or Michael Penix at this spot, even though they do need a quarterback. Yeah, it's it's an interesting spot for the Broncos for sure because they do need a quarterback and another team that does need a quarterback, the Las Vegas Raiders. Who I'm going to fix that for them. Uh, so with the 13th pick. We're going to go with Michael Penix Jr. out of Washington. I was very impressed with the Huskies this season, uh, as I mentioned earlier with Roma Duze. I like I like Penix as well. The southpaw left-handedness might throw some people off, but look, I'm not gonna lie. I was easily convinced by the person who made the who took the video and just flipped it like in reverse, where it looked like he was a right-hander, and he looks way better than you would think. So. I think Penix, proven winner. Uh, hell, he made Indiana decent. Do you know how hard that is? Uh, <laughs> brought Washington to a national title. I'm, I'm just saying, like the guy, the guy's a winner. He could, uh, and I, uh, I, I like, I like him this late. I think that's. I think you're getting a lot of value there. I, I think overall as a quarterback, you know, you have a lot of flash early on, but you know, Penix might be getting overlooked a bit. So I think, uh, I think Vegas has a good, good guy there. They pick up Penix. Yeah, I like to pick a lot. I think uh, Penix there makes. Uh, I think Penix there makes sense, um, I, and I think the Raiders like would love to to have him. You know, Antonio Pierce. You know that that division is going to be brutal. So um, they 
definitely could use a, a guy in Penix has experience, dynamic, going to put on a show. Um, yeah, that's a, a Raiders pick to me. And uh, now we have Lexi with the Saints. <laughs> yeah. Time. All right. <laughs> So yeah, with Derek, you know, I think about like Derek Carby and the Saints. They just want to get more protection for him. I think he does well when he has more time. So um, I really like uh, Fashanu that comes out of uh, Penn State. Just a beast, um, you know, big guy, really strong. Um, so I, I think New Orleans is going to take him just to get, you know, get anything on that line to beef it up a bit um, going into this season. So yeah, we got a run on Ryman. Uh, and there's and this is a great O line draft, by the way. Like it is, it's like stacked. I mean, you know, there's a lot. Team. So anyone who needs it, it's a good time. Yeah, a great O line draft for sure. Um, all right, fifteen, the Colts. Uh, I thought about trading this pick. Um, yeah, I thought about trading trading this pick. Um, but I think the Colts in this, like, just looking at how the board is going. Uh, I think in this scenario, they would probably just kind of take their pick of defensive players, which so far we haven't drafted many yet. It's pretty much just been offense, Um, you know. So I think with their needs at corner, uh, I think the Colts are just going to stick here and take the best guy available. Um, You know, you can debate who that is, Terrion Arnold, uh, Quinion Mitchell, um, I think Colts, like they're a blue collar type. Um, they're a, a blue collar team, blue collar city. I think they would love to take a guy from Toledo. Um, that's, you know, mid-major guy, probably got a chip on his shoulder, you know, type, type, you know, type situation over like a Alabama dude. So I'm going to have them take a Quinion Mitchell from a Toledo here, um, to, you know, help the secondary for, for uh, Indianapolis. I like it. I like it. And, you know, you're right. It is it is time to start picking up these Dallas guys. Or Dallas guys. I, I screwed it up. <laughs> Defensive guys. I'm going with Dallas Turner out of uh, Alabama uh, with our next pick uh, going with um, Seattle. You know, they're kind of rebuilding right now. Uh, Pete Carroll out. Uh, nobody really knows what's next. But, you know... Seattle is anchored on good defense, regardless of or the, that's 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 what that whole era was with the Legion of Boom, all of that. So what better way to get back to your roots a little bit than get a hard hitting, solid uh, edge rusher um, who I, I think could be excellent if he falls this far that, you know, edge edge is such a hard position to get right um, and getting him. Getting a guy this good this late could be pretty big. So I think uh, Seattle, even though you got some work to do on offense, work to do everywhere. So maybe try to get someone special there at uh, at edge if he falls to you like that. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's a good pick. All right. So what we got next? Uh, yeah, Jaguars. Okay. Um, I'm going to say um, – their secondary really needs some work. So I think just kind of best, you know, corner um, off the draft right now um, is that Terry and Arnold from Alabama. Um, I think that uh, that would be a good fit. He's a tough guy. He's great. Um, I think he's really, really talented. So at that point, it's kind of just like take the best you can get um, for that position. And that's who I think they'll roll with. Love it. Terry and Arnold. Out of Alabama, help that defense a little bit. Um, you know, you got CJ Stroud throwing passes to Stephon Diggs now, so you got to have. Yeah, you, know, you got to really beef up all of your secondary <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah. Like I still can't believe that. When I saw that, I was like, "Oh my god, dude, he's about to win!" Like <laughs> <laughs> CJ Stroud's about to throw for six thousand yards. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, man, uh, his M- MVP odds. Yeah, got to check those. Oh, I'm sure it shot through the roof. Yeah. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> okay, Bengals. Um, sort of in a weird situation. Joe Burrow. Hopefully, he's he's back healthy from injury. Um, you know, and has a better year. Still a tough division. Um, you've got T. Higgins. 
you know, playing uh, lo- not lonely, uh, locked up by Akon on his IG story. <laughs> like <laughs> weird, weird situation out there in Cincinnati. Uh, you know, a lot of things you can do here. Um, this makes me a little bit nervous, though, because just looking at our board, like the Bengals have a very obvious need. They could take a receiver, but they have a very, very obvious need to like protect Joe Burrow, put some beef on the offensive line. But man, we have taken like you know a good chunk of the best linemen on the board. So in this scenario, like if I'm being completely honest, like I'm looking at trade partners here if I'm the Bengals. Um, but you kind of like are in a weird situation because um, there's no one like right behind you that like would jump up to like grab, you know, Bo Nix or whatever, or like, you know, get a quarterback. Um, there's not really just an obvious trade situation here. All the, you know, all the flasher receivers are gone, you know, there's just not, yeah, it's just, the trades just aren't there. So, you know, again, I think the um, Bengals just take best offensive tackle available uh, in this situation. And uh, I'm just going to grab J.C. Latham from Alabama. Um, other options you can consider here, Tyler Guyton from Bobby's Oklahoma Sooners. Um, there's an, another guy from uh, – I think Georgia as well, uh, Mims. But uh, I think the, the, the Bengals just uh, play it safe and take J.C. from uh, Bama to beef up that line and protect Joe Burrow. I like it. I Just anything to, you know, protect Burrow. And uh, you remember that one, that one meme, like, right when Burrow got drafted where it was like, who do you pick, either a O-tackle o- or a good receiver? And it's just basically Burrow getting knocked out, can't throw the ball. You just got to you, you got to do whatever you can to shore up that O line. So I like that pick a lot. Um, yeah. I, I, I next, love how like I, sorry, I didn't really get to. I, I you no, know, you're good. I love how like Jamar Chase was so awesome that people were like, "Oh man, like obviously the Bengals made the right pick." And then like a couple years later, it's like, "Well, like pretty cool. That pretty cool guy's pretty nice." Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I love how it's like it was like not a debate, and then now it's a debate. Now, <laughs> like it's just it's just so funny. But it's right, funny. Like, it works out. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Uh, all right. I look. I, I'm I'm gonna be uh, up front here. I I fall into ruts. I fall in love with positions, and if I see spots that I like and guys that I like available, like I go with it. So you know, even though I'm supposed to be kind of acting as as uh, the same, you know, or as different teams, you know, sometimes my my own behavior leaks into this. And frankly, I love edge rushers, and you know. For the past some odd years, the uh, the Rams have had one of the most fearsome defenders. You know, made like not quite an edge rusher, but still just just a, a, a quarterback bully in Aaron Donald. He's retired. You gotta bring some firepower back. And Jared Verse, I hate to say it, you're gonna have to try to fill those shoes, buddy, because I'm drafting you uh, with the uh, for the LA Rams here. Um, Verse is a player I loved at Florida State. I feel like he, yeah, I feel like FSU as the season went went on, you know, kind of lost track of that, you know, especially after Jordan Travis went down. Um, but Verse is, it, it's just he is just a to me incredibly solid edge that I feel like you could just develop and take to another level. Um, it's it's hard to find guys with this, you know, just who are built like this. And I feel like uh, the Rams, after dealing with Donald and all this, same coaching staff and everything, that's a good that's good staff to learn from to uh, become dominant. So we're going to go with Jared Verse uh, for the Rams. Yeah, I love it, Jared Verse. I feel like he was talked about as like a top five type guy, 
like early in the draft cycle, and now his his um, profile has kind of cooled off. I, I didn't really pay attention to like his combine or pro day or anything like that, so I don't know what what's happened. But um, I think Jared Verse at nineteen, great value for the Rams, like you said. You know, no one's going to replace Aaron Donald, but like to get, you know, you need to start rebuilding this, that defensive. Um, the defensive identity, and this is a guy that you can definitely deal with in the inverse. So I really like that pick for LA. All right. Um, all right. So we got Steelers on the clock. So uh, with all the changes they've had and the Russell Wilson, uh, Justin Fields experiment that we're about to endure, um, I'd say that they're going to probably take someone here again to protect the two quarterbacks that they've not, they now have on the roster. Um, I, at this point would probably take the best available and I'm going to go with that Amarius Mims from, um, oh gosh, where's it from? Oh, Georgia. Yeah, Georgia. I was going to say Alabama, but I'm like, no, that's not right. (laughs) But yeah, so I think that, you know, again, a good athlete, someone who's going to, you know, give you that production and, and stuff right off the bat, um, and can protect big guy. So I think it'll be a good fit, um, for Tomlin's kind of thing going on too. So. Yeah, the Steelers are an interesting spot. They have two, like, basically starting quarterbacks <laughs> um, that are going yeah. to have to other. need to protect them. <laughs> yeah, and they lost. They lost Deontay Johnson and I, I think another receiver as well. Um, but I would say, like, the defense is solid. Like, you know, they have not been a bad team. They've been fine. They just. I've had Mason Rudolph and Mitch Trubisky at quarterback, you know, all these years. And so, you know, I think protection is going to be a safe pick. They could also, you know, do something random, like take a linebacker or something. But uh, I like this pick for for uh, for Pittsburgh. Um, and that leads to me with the Dolphins. Dolphins kind of another weird one. Like, you know, no, nothing really screams at you um, for them except for, like, there, there is one obvious spot, and that's offensive line um, because of the losses they had, had in the offseason. Uh, obviously, weapons are fine. Um, you know, they're not going to take, like, a running back or anything like that. Um, I mean, could stand to to have a defensive guy um, as well, but no one really screams at you. Um, you know, J- I know Jalen Ramsey's there, like, you know, he sort of passed his prime, so they might think about picking a corner um, like uh, Arnold, who I don't think has been picked. Oh, yeah. No, no, never mind. He's gone. Jaguars. Never mind. So, yeah. Uh, no, no, they won't take it. <laughs> they won't have a top corner available in this scenario. But, uh, yeah, I think, you know, uh, I just – and in, in just looking at the board and, and what we've done already, I don't see them kind of doing anything except probably just, you know, taking – a tackle, which, you know, Tyler Guyton, Oklahoma, you know, I think is probably the best they're going to be able to do um, here. No one really behind them, I think, could really jump ahead of them uh, with the amount of tackles that are already off the board. I don't know, I think it would be good value um, unless they, unless the team really likes Guyton. But, yeah, I think the I think the Dolphins would probably do that, um, put some protection around to a so another offensive lineman off the board. It's Tyler Guyton for the Dolphins. Yep, I love that fit for Guyton. Um, another beaten bow guy. Uh, we've talked about the, uh, that in previous years. Um, comes from a good system, good coaching. Um, it's come a long way in his time at Oklahoma. So I think that's that's a good pickup. All right, Bobby, you got the Eagles. Uh, that I do. That I do. Um, this is a tough one. This is a tough one for me. Um, I feel like they're going to have to go cornerback here and you're dealing with essentially you're pretty much split between at this point, Nate Wiggins and Cloyd McKinstry. Um, it's a tough go. I'm just from what I've, what I know and what I've read, I'm going to go with the guy with the more raw tangibles and I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Wiggins. Um, I feel like, 
I feel like when you have a good defense, good setup like you do in Philly, you can teach that and add development. And I think, I, I think to me, sometimes systems can be little. And I don't, I don't want to say it, it was a crutch. And Clemson's defense is still damn good. Just without Venables, it's been different. So I'm going to go with the guy with the more raw potential and go with Nate Wiggins on this one for the Eagles. I think either selection would be good, but uh, they're going to have to shore up the cornerback uh, room, I think. like that. Wiggins is a dog. Um, okay. We got the Vikings on the clock with Lexi at number 23. Yeah, so I think <clears throat> Vikings really need to work on building up their defense. Um, they really gave up a lot last year, so I think kind of just anything to put pressure on the quarterback or whatever, um, I think they'll probably end up taking anywhere along the D-line, but especially edge. I think best available like at this point um, would be Chop Robinson. So I'm going to um, – they're going to take him. I think he'll fit good in their scheme that they've got going so far. Um, I know they're changing a little bit up <clears throat> otherwise, but I um, think that Chop will fit great in Minnesota. Chop Robinson. Yeah, from Penn State. That's a, that's a great name. I know. I'm like, I, especially it's just like meant to be. <laughs> Chop Robinson. Yeah, I'm looking this guy up. Hold on one second. Yeah, he's a beast. That's crazy. His name was actually Chop. Chop, yeah. <laughs> Six three two fifty four. That's funny. Legally named Chop. It's great. That's actually wild. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, I am on the clock with the Cowboys. The Cowboys could trade up, I think, um, but being where they're at, sitting here at twenty four. Uh, the Cowboys kind of need a, a lot of things. Um, they lost a lot of pieces um, in depth at the, in the receiver room. Um, and offensive tackle as well. They could definitely use that. I just think in this, like looking at our board, we've taken so many tackles that I think like if I'm a GM, I'm like, all right, I might be able to get a better receiver then I can't tackle at this point in the first round because so many have gotten off, gone off the board, which again, you know, there's just depth. There's just so much depth of that position in this draft, this draft class. So uh, with that in mind, um, a lot of folks like Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, to go high, um, Donnie Mitchell from Texas. For me though, like I really was impressed Every single time I watched Keon Coleman, he jumped off the screen. I know there's some concerns about his speed. I think he's like, I I, I think that's BS to be honest. Um, I I think if somehow he were to fall to the Panthers in the second round at 33, like that would be a dream come true. Um, but yeah, Keon Coleman was a beast at Florida State. I think the Cowboys would absolutely. Love to have him there. I think he would be the second receiver right next to C.D. Lamb. Um, and that would give them some depth with him uh, and C.D. and Brandon Cooks in their receiver room and whoever else they bring in. So, um, you know, will it save Dak? I mean, will it save the Cowboys from Dak melting in the playoffs? No, but <laughs> it'll be a nice <laughs> For the fans to be excited about <laughs> if the Cowboys win, so they're really like convince themselves they're going to do the Super Bowl. And so, yeah, I like Keon Coleman out of uh, FSU to go here. Yeah, I was, I was a little bummed out I didn't get the Cowboys because I, I, I was going to probably come out with some funny joke about Jerry Jones trading the pick for like a bottle of Johnny Walker Blue or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but. <laughs> Anyways, I like the, I do like the pick. I, I feel like that's that, that adds and helps out uh, Dak Prescott quite a bit. Um, next up, I got the Packers. And look, last time I talked about Wiggins versus Kool Aid McKinstry. Street, and look, the, the Packers I believe once drafted a man by the name of Ha Ha Clinton Dix. <laughs> you got to add a cool name. Got to shore up the cornerback room right now. I like it. So let's add in Kool Aid uh, to the to the group here. So. Uh, we're going to draft Kool-Aid with the 25th pick to the Green Bay Packers. 
Love that. Love that. All right. So we got the books on the clock. All right. Well, I was going to choose Kool-Aid because I, I really believe that um, the Bucks could use some help in their secondary as well. So if I can't have Kool-Aid. I'm going to go with the next best on the list. <laughs> Cooper Dijon from Iowa. Um, I think, you know, he's a, he's a highly skilled player Again, someone who can go out there and compete right away. Uh, good work ethic, um, really tough player. Obviously Iowa's defense is always ranked, um, you know, pretty high. So uh, I think he'll be a great fit for them. Cooper Dijon. All right. One second, just type it in. Yeah, um, man, I'm, I got the Cardinals here at 27, and I should have traded up <laughs> with myself or something because uh, the Cardinals' second biggest need behind receiver was corner, and the next two best corners just got taken ahead of me. So um, I fumbled the bag on that. Sorry, Cardinals fans. Um, that's my mistake. <laughs> I did not know that Bobby and Lance were going to grab corners uh, after I took Keon Coleman for the Cowboys. <laughs> uh, so now I'm a little bit stuck uh, as to what to do because uh, this would be a disastrous result for the Cardinals if this were to happen in real life. Um, so, yeah, um, I, I think they got their franchise receiver. Um Cornerback, you don't want to reach. I mean, they could, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, yeah. Oh, this is tough. Um. Ooh, yeah. Sorry, guys. This is this totally threw me off. I know, I'm like, stuck at this. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> um. Okay. Well. Okay. So, I I think. In this scenario, I think the next smart thing to do is just sort of like best player available. Um, I, I think I'm going to go with Jackson Powers Johnson, um, highly rated interior offensive lineman. Can never go wrong with protection for your quarterback. Add some depth to the O line. He did a great job, obviously, with the protection the Knicks had. Um, you know, Nothing wrong with grabbing an offensive lineman from Oregon. So, yeah, we're going to go Jackson Powers Johnson for the Cardinals here at 27. Okay. I am trying to figure – actually, no, I know exactly what I'm going to do with the Bills. I was already thinking ahead to the Niners, just thinking on different levels here. Uh, for me, with the Buffalo Bills, um, I think it becomes pretty obvious. You know, Twitter has been joking about it. We all know what's going on with them. Uh, with the trade of Stefan Diggs, their wide receiver room is incredibly bare. And uh, look, we're going to get things started off right by going with uh, Adonai Mitchell, A.D. Mitchell out of Texas. Um, I've, the better of the two Texas re receivers, if you ask me. Uh, worthy, don't get me wrong, very solid player. Um, A.D. Mitchell is the one that scared me a little bit more. Um going into the cotton bowl. Um, I feel like he was the difference between them being like pretty good and a college football playoff team. He took, he took yours to a different level. Having multiple weapons like that uh, was huge for uh, Quinn Ewers then. And I don't think he solves all of your issues. They need, they, they need to go to work after losing digs. But uh, A.D. Mitchell is a really good start to help rebuild that uh, wide receiver room with uh, Diggs and, to a, slider, a smaller degree, Gabe Davis leaving. Yeah, I like yeah. All right. Next on the clock is my Lions at 29. Um, for what it's worth, I probably should have traded up because I really do believe that they want Kool-Aid. Like, I think that Brad and Dan have their eyes on him, but that's besides the point. So, I mean, at this point, we're going to just take the best available player. Um, <clears throat> I am going to go – oh, my gosh. Um, all right. Anything to, like, give us depth, you know, give the Lions depth um, and get – um, in our secondary, especially, you know, uh, defensive end, whatever. But I like that Rake Straw Jr. out of Missouri. Um, especially, too, they, they pinpoint on how his, like, man-to-man -man coverage is really good. And, like, 
there were a couple of, you know, guys on our team getting beat badly in that secondary last season. So just to have any kind of depth and, and just to build, um, you know, to have healthy players available that are physical and kind of have a, the mindset, I'd say, to to play for Detroit. I think that he could fit on there pretty well. So. All right. I like that name too, Ray Strong. Yeah. Ray Strong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that intimidating as hell. I love it. Yeah, Ray Straw. Ray Straw. <laughs> Sounds uh, like some like the like the real name of a Batman villain. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, we need to do like with all these crazy names, we need to do some kind of like thing where we can like name the villains like heroes and stuff. Because I feel like so many crazy names have come across from like football in these last few years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> given given me like Freddy Krueger vibes. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, it's rem- it's reminding me of my like top three, top five Key and Peele sketches is the East West Triangle. Like <laughs> those names are so freaking funny. Man. Like oh my god, oh my god, Jack I mean, Mary is tack their tricks. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he's a Lions fan. Yeah, it's so great when he's like on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. That's funny. Okay. Um, all right. I got the Ravens on the clock here at 30. The Ravens are another team, kind of need a, a lot of things. Uh receiver lost OBJ. Um they could also use help at uh, edge and uh, DB. A lot of DBs off the board, so kind of not really wanting to rush there. Edge rusher to me uh, could be interesting here if I'm like really thinking about it. Like uh, they they could probably uh, do some interesting things there. Uh, but we've taken a lot of good edge rushers off the board. Um, offensive line might be a consideration too, but. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with receiver here. One guy that's kind of high on the big boards that has fallen uh, in our draft, Brand Thomas Jr. out of LSU. Uh, yeah, sorry, Lexi. So <laughs> I was like, no, please <laughs> give me the Ravens that weapon. Now the Ravens is interesting because what they will actually do is interesting because they have taken a lot of receivers in the draft as of late. So you know, front office might be like, okay, let's you know, stop drafting receivers or figure out something, another strategy, but you need weapons. You know, the AFC is not getting any weaker. You know, the, the Ravens need pass catchers and, and talented guys. And so Brian Thomas Jr. following you here is a good, a good value pick for them. So I'm, I'm going with that as my pick for Baltimore. I like it. Um, so with the departure of Chase Young, him going to New Orleans, um, I think the 49ers could be a play to move up for a edge player. I didn't think about this early enough, and I don't want to go revi- revisionist history and try to make a trade. Uh, so we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna stack the D line a little bit differently then, uh, and go with Johnny Newton, the defensive tackle out of Illinois. Um, I feel like I, I, I feel like the Niners overall just defensively are incredible and getting him at this point this late feels like it could be a pretty good ad. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my move. All right. And last but not least, we got the chiefs with the 32nd pick. Um, you know, obviously, I really want to take a wide receiver here because even whatever they've done, you know, in this offseason, I just feel like you just need to make sure that, you know, no matter what, Pat Mahomes has has those weapons back. So um, I did want Brian Thomas Jr., but I will take Mitchell out of Texas. I think that, um, you know, he's he's a good, a good receiver. He'll be a good playmaker, um, you know, especially I guess anyone can really be good with Pat Mahomes, but well, I think he'd be a good fit. He, but, he, oh. he, got, he got drafted already, I think. Oh, he did? I, I, yeah, uh-huh. I got him earlier. Yeah. Oh, I'm, my bad. My bad. Oh, oh it's okay. Shoot. You can just you can take not... Worthy. Just take the other <laughs> Texas guy. Uh, well, actually, he was going to be my next one because he's also, I mean, an electric player, you know. So I feel like you get someone who's electric, who's quick on their feet, who's fast. Pat Mahomes is going to get him the ball. 
So, um, yeah, that works. Xavier worthy to Kansas City. <laughs> He's an unbelievable speedster. Like the guy. Dude, the guy had, I just yeah. wish. I wish it would have worked out in Michigan. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, awesome. That's it. That's our mock draft. First round. Yeah. Pretty good. I think it went, went smoothly. Um, you know, no trades. So it wasn't really uh, too much drama. But um I think, like, that's the thing when you have a draft with, like, so much depth. Um, it's kind of hard to justify, like, trades for some of these teams. It's like so many of these teams, like, you know, they there's so much – there's so many needs for offensive linemen or receiver and, you know, obviously quarterback as well. And, you know, those are the positions where the draft is the deepest. So, I think it's like, you know, for some of these te- – it'll be interesting to see how many trades happen on draft night – how many teams maybe trade back because they feel like there's value um, or players that are slipping off uh, where these defensive guys go, because again, there's so much depth on offense that, you know, the defensive dudes might be sitting in the green room for a while. So yeah, I think it was, it was a fun exercise and uh, can't wait for the real thing. Yeah, I'm so excited. Any, any, <laughs> before we get off any like draft hot takes, Anything that you've been like seeing in the media that you like are want to scream into the void about that annoy you that you're looking forward to that you're that you're I don't know any 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 takes before we get out of here because we you won't see us again until after draft so it's true yeah <laughs> you know yeah. it's good I think it's I think it's gonna be crazy I think something something big is gonna happen. Like I just, that's just my, like, and I guess not really a hot take is something big pretty much always happens, but I just feel like, I don't know. I don't even know if Brad Holmes is going to do something crazy. Cause he's like, okay, the drafts in my city, but like, let's show them what the hell are made of, you know? So um, I'm going to be on the lookout for that. <laughs> yeah. This was a pretty straightforward mock draft, which means that something, something's going to come in <laughs> and screw everything up and we're going to be completely wrong. Uh, I mean, last year, Think about what the Texans did, that massive power play to move up and um, also pick up Will Anderson. Um, Yeah, I'm just, I think something crazy will happen because I think a lot of teams, you know, I think, you know, despite the Chiefs winning it again, um, this is a pretty open league. Uh, And I think that um, the rise of the Texans is an example that you can make a big leap pretty quick and the draft is a good way to do that. So, uh, intrigued to see who who's the one to, one to take that jump. Yeah. So this is not a like crazy like spicy hot take. I think this is just like what's going to happen because of the depth in this draft. But I think somebody really, 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 really good is going to be waiting in the green room for a, a long time, and we're going to look back and be like, "How the hell did this do?" <laughs> it's, it's like it's like an almost like like an Aaron Rodgers situation where it's like, oh, how did that guy fall to like 20 or whatever it was? Like, or Patrick, even Patrick Mahomes, like who went to like 12. But like, I think Rodgers and Pat Mahomes weren't as like great as prospects as like some of the guys who might fall down are. But yeah, I think just with the depth and everything, there's going to be some like good guys that, that get drafted late and in the better situations. So um, yeah, I think it'll be a fun draft, and I can't wait uh, for it to come. But another fun show. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, hope you enjoy the draft and other things, and uh, we'll see you again right here on uh, Multiple <laughs> See ya. Peace. See y'all.